All right, Python on hardware news this week. We've got a very specific one that we want to help get the word out. If you like PyCon and you like CircuitPython, guess what? You're going to be able to see Jeff. Yay! So, um, this will be live streamed, I think. Yeah, I think they post these and the slides are going to be up, but we'll yeah. make sure people can see it. But uh, PyCon US. Jeff Epler's talk on connecting old to new with CircuitPython retro computing of devices on modern PCs. It'll be May 19th, 1.45 p.m. 2.15. It'll be in Hall C at PyCon US 2024 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yep. Um, I mean, Jeff has had, a, you know, last year or so, he's had a great run of just um, going through a bunch of cool retro devices from SNES mice to Tandy keyboards to Xerox computers to all sorts of, you know, floppy drives and CRTs and whatnot. Um, getting them to all work again, uh, bringing them back to life with by mixing old and new technology, especially using, um, you know, boards like the KB2040, um, ESP chips and CircuitPython, which has made it really easy for him to um, make these mods. And I think it's a cool demonstration of um, the power of CircuitPython where you can embed you know, assembler level PIO structures within a um, easy to understand and program circuit Python script that is, you know, quickly adaptable. Um, definitely one of the things about dealing with retro technology is, you know, you're kind of half reverse engineering, half debugging, half learning. Um, so having a fast iteration cycle is is key and that's what circuit Python lets you do. So uh, yeah, if you're at PyCon, of course, please go. Um, and if you're not, then wait in the slides yeah. and video will be posted. And I think like one, um, you know, funny thing with this talk, but also I think it's important because anytime people talk about retro stuff, they're like, oh, people are destroying things. No, no keyboards are harmed in this. There's, this is non-evasive. This it's is another one of the cool things. You get to touch the just, protocol and it just it. works. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's really important. And, you know, there's lots of, um, mods and things that people do where they like gut retro hardware and sometimes this stuff just is broken doesn't work but this is working with equipment that you're not going to destroy um so you also want to talk about something else i was i was asking you about it um a couple of things uh well actually at the very top is where we got the yeah. go up to 750 actually i think we're 755 um yeah yeah uh, okay. Um, the thing that's cool is Raspberry, Raspberry Pi, Pi Connect. Pi. This is kind of neat because, like, you know, one of the things with VNC is that you, you know, if you set up VNC on your Raspberry Pi so that you can like view and control your Raspberry Pi remotely, traditionally you can only do it within the same network because like it's it's peer to peer, point to point. Um, but now Raspberry Pi has like this service, Raspberry Pi Connect. And it's a little bit like Zoom, but for like Raspberry Pis. Can they even mention that? So you because it's if you have a Pi on a different network, like how do you know at the IP address and how do you like, you know, route back and forth and connect to it? Um, this, is a, this is a hard problem to do because everyone's behind a firewall on purpose. Um, Raspberry Pi now has a service that they run that helps connect your Pi to your computer web browser. Um, so they've solved the little problem of like, how do you know where in the world your computer is? Once you identify it, then you can send data back and forth without touching their servers. So they, it's kind of a nice, Little add on for us. Sort of like a million years ago when you're running your own web server and you wanted to use your like home cable modem connection and you needed to be able to serve up pages, but it was always a um, dynamic network address. It was always a different IP address. So it, it would be able to register the IP address and then it would be able to route to get to it so you can do stuff. Yeah. I'm sure there is, this is kind of neat because now there's lots of ways to do this. You could probably do this before, but now this is brought to you by Raspberry Pi. It, you could do it, but it's like, it's like very complicated and you're using like third party services and you know, like you have to trust them. Yeah. Um, here you're just using Raspberry Yeah, Pi. this is neat. So um, you'll be able to log into it from anywhere and you can yeah. also. And it's going to be useful for like, if you're running Blinka or yeah. where you could connect to your hardware and controller from anywhere. It's kind yeah. of nice. That's really neat. Yeah. Probably would be good for people who do home automation stuff too. Okay. And uh, that is our Python on hardware news this week. Don't forget, deliver to your inbox every single week. Go to itfordaily.com. Thanks, Blinka. It is a completely separate website. We do that because we don't like spam either. And uh, go there, sign up, or get on GitHub, or the RSS feed, or on the blog, any of those places.